Yeah, just as a kid, uh, we used to, uh, well, it, we, let me just say that like my mother actually majored in English at uh, Florida State University. She went on to become a real estate attorney, but for whatever reason, like that, she actually wrote her thesis, I believe, on uh, Henry James, if I'm getting that correctly. But yeah, it's not like there was a lot of Henry James around the house. It's, we, we were like literate without being literary, you know, uh, there, there were kind of nodes around the house, bookcases, inset closets, this kind of thing where there would just be, you know, shelves of just the most disparate, strange books you could find. Like there'd be, you know, old naval history next to, you know, the Lord of the Rings next to, you know, 80s pot boilers with like embossed covers and stuff like that. So more than anything there was like this kind of like sense of wonder and magic about these spots where you know maybe behind the old world book encyclopedias you'd pull out some other you know in crazy bit of you know like here's how you tie knots for your sailboat or whatever so for me at least it was it was always felt like there there could be something new to be found there every time i'd return and I mean, maybe it kind of manifests itself in my inability to like sustain uh, like a narrative or something for, for too, too long because what always interested me were like getting these like bits and little blasts of like new interesting things or characters or stories or something like that. So for me, it was more of a grazing experience going to these, you know, spots and kind of, you know, supping from them. Uh, you know, especially like late at night or if I like had bad dreams and couldn't get back to sleep or something like that. You just go to these places and pull out, you know, it's War Day, the novel of like New York City being nuked or something like that. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, our mother always reading to this day, still reading, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of shifted away from novels from, you know, Henry James to like uh, Thomas Merton more so now, like she's a very Catholic, very spiritual person. Uh, but yeah, she's always reading, reading encyclicals and things like that. Our father, uh, a voracious consumer of news, and uh, once we kind of opened Pandora's box and we showed him how to use the internet, which uh, was just a terrible mistake. Um, no, he, he's, he's a, you know, he's a voraciously up to date, but uh, in terms of like fiction or, you know, longer, like he, there's a closet full of all of our uh, Christmas gifts that we've given the man, and these include so many, so many attempted books. There are like books that we attempted, you know, in purchasing to get him to read them. So it's World War II histories or stuff about pirates or, you know, this, that, or the other thing. Like I think one year I tried to get him this, you know, uh, compendium of all college football, everything, and it just never took. And it's like kind of, it's both like a reluctance to read couched in like this like reverence for like the 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 act of giving him a gift you know where it's like i if you didn't want to put on like a, a garment because you wouldn't want to ruin it because that would you know ruin this magical thing you gave me where it's like yeah right dad you just don't want to read but uh yeah and and karen no karen was someone who was always reading just just around the clock walking around the house almost like in this fugue state where you could not get her attention no matter how hard you tried you know you could be clapping directly in her face you could be shouting her name nothing just no, nothing was going to break her out of that be it you know like a babysitter's club book or like the back of the stovetop stuffing box or whatever it could be and so she you know it, it was always apparent that her she was going to be creating these kind of you know building these really immersive worlds and like she could just go into that kind of state where like you know this hyper fecund imagination is just going to give you something you know just remarkable almost miraculous whereas for me I, it was always more fun to kind of watch Karen doing that you know there was always more of a, a distance and an observational kind of thing with how she was um, but yeah we like I was when I was a child I was always reading it wasn't like very literary or good I wasn't reading good things I remember uh, one uh, kind of elementary school teacher was very much dispirited by the fact that I was reading like video game novelizations. It was just like, Jesus Christ, man, <laughs> like just read, you know, White Fang or something. Uh, but yeah, I, we, we would go as a family, there's, it's closed now, a, a Borders bookstore on the main stretch in Miami along US 1. And as a family, like, Every Friday, we would go there, you know, we'd each be allowed to, like, pick out a book or whatever, and, you know, Karen, 
would run off and get, you know, like the heart is a lonely hunter. And I would go to like the sci-fi section and just try to find the coolest looking cover illustration of like, you know, like a regiment of Civil War soldiers gets transported to a distant planet and has to fight their way home or something. It was like, yes. <laughs> so uh, it was always, it was always, you know, like a, just a, a gripping yarn kind of thing when I was a child. And then, you know, and uh, obviously like the, the, your kind of stories of, self-sufficient people like be it you know Robinson Crusoe or you know like I was mentioning earlier the boxcar children or you know uh, the K or you know what all of those books all of those books that spoke about like you know and you can kind of see it in Karen's fiction as well where there's like kind of marooned children kind of you know building a world themselves and kind of you know that that kind of wonder and fascination of like you really, you know, you, you got all the answers already inside you. You can totally, you know, exist and be able to pull out a solution to a problem from within yourself. Just use your ingenuity, et cetera. So, you know, th those were always tremendously interesting and captivating to me. Then, of course, I entered puberty where there was just like a, a switch was flipped in whatever kind of like love of language, you know, and literature, whatever nascent thing was inside me, just kind of got like the blanket thrown over it and beat with a bar of soap and a sock, you know, like until it could rise again in my, you know, early 20s. But yeah, that was a dark time. Uh, just go, because Miami in general is not uh, the most cultured place. I mean, there's tons of vibrant, beautiful cultures there, but in terms of like appreciating the written word or, you know, opera or whatever you want, uh, not the best place. There's, you know, it's, let's all just go lay in the sun for a while. But uh, yeah, so just in general, it was not like a, like Karen took refuge in books more than I c could or wanted to just because, you know, if you went walking around with like a copy of The Shining, like someone would just kind of slap that out of your hand and just be like, this isn't a Starbucks. You know, it was, uh, it was yeah, it was, it was more of a kind of survival thing for me to not, to not be, appear too bookish. But yeah, no, there's always been for me like a love of language and a love of playing with language and just like the sonorousness of certain things. And so that was always kind of kept alive in me. And like, like I was mentioning before, our father is such a, a gifted storyteller and truly hilarious, truly hilarious individual. And just this, this idea of, you know, making a character out of yourself, like creating like this persona, you know, it's, it's scaled, it's a much smaller, you know, size, the map isn't, doesn't cover the actual scale, but you know, it's the idea of like playing with that sense of identity, that sense of here's who's telling you this story, you know, and, and for him, it was almost like uh, being able to see that kind of act of, you know, like uh, the authorial self-making of even in like personal narrative or memoir or something where it's like, you know, there's this me, me now telling you about me then ostensibly, you know, and there's like this gap here. And for him, you know, he lamented it, but it was like a gap that he lived out where like these stories would be about him then when he was like having wild and crazy times and he was in Vietnam when, you know, he's a young man in a different America, that kind of thing. And it was almost like it was being told wistfully by the, you know, the him that exists at that moment where he, you know, saw himself kind of as an almost tragic figure like this, you know, domesticated beast who now like was giving, you know, and was excellent at it, but was like his life was dedicated to his children. And so he would tell us all these, you know, great, probably not the best kind of bedtime story material for children. You know, there's, I think I mentioned it in the book that there are all these kind of shards of just, just lewd jokes. That I can't even remember what the punchlines are, but have to do with like two bricks and a camel's drooping scrotum and things like that, where it's like, don't tell a child that. But that's, you know, anyway, that's a, a long way of saying that. You know, I, I very much used to read when I was younger, and then there came like a lacuna, but f like filling that vacuum was like this very strong personality and very strong, you know, someone who was a strong kind of narrator of his own life, his own demise in his eyes. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's always been something that, you know, I, I love the most, that kind of very charismatic, if deeply flawed, or, you know, just that kind of almost, you know, Miltonic Satan voice where it's like, that's, I probably shouldn't be rooting for this guy, but <laughs> goddamn if I'm not rooting for this guy, you know? So that, it was kind of, I mean, I love hybrid anything. I mean, I think it's apparent in that book that there's, you know, a lot of different, a lot of different things being pulled together. And, you know, I like to think that it was done very consciously, but I very much enjoy 
joy. Like, so I, I'll joke with Karen about it, where it's like, I really hope people don't treat this as almost like a sampler platter, where like, you know, you know, here's, you know, all right, the buffalo wings went pretty quickly. Nobody wants to touch like the congealed potato skins of like hockey writing. Like everybody's just like, Ew, no, and skip ahead, you know. But it's to me like that was. A, a huge draw was kind of stitching these things together into a co coherent whole because, you know, I did feel that there was a through line through them. Anyway.